Biden building miles of border wall is especially shocking, given the repetitive drumbeat. We have a process in place to manage migrants at the border. The border is secure. But we also have a broken immigration system. The fact of the matter is the border is closed. It is my testimony that the border is secure. The United States will continue to enforce our laws and secure our border. The president has done more to secure the border and to deal with this issue of immigration than anybody else. I want to be very clear. Our borders are not open. Republican Congresswoman Kat Kamek of Florida, a member of the House Homeland Security and Agricultural Committees. Look, when you listen to us rolling back the tape, those were lies. And there's no other way to put it because you couldn't just flip a switch and get what we have like five minutes ago. No, no, Harris, it's good to see you. And no, that is absolutely a lie. For the last three years, we have seen Biden and all of his administration officials tout the line that the border is secure. I've been there myself nine times, and I have seen the trafficking. I have seen the national security crisis. I have seen the apprehension of international terrorists on the watch list as people are saying, oh, no, it's totally fine. It's not. This has turned every single town in America into a border town, and it is directly Joe Biden's fault from his lack of action. And then to lie on top of it, well, that's just unacceptable. Well, and your governor, DeSantis, in Florida really got their attention when he sent, you know, like 50 illegal immigrants who'd come across the border up to Martha's Vineyard, the precious country of elites, of those liberals who just loved to party there. It got their attention, but it didn't change their policy. It didn't exactly. change until those cities were crippled by what the border deals with every day. You're so right about that. All right, let's get to this. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about New York City Mayor Eric Adams. He started his day in Mexico City, the first leg of a four-day stop in Central and South America. And the goal, he says, is convincing people not to come to New York City. Now, Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson is planning a trip of his own. Oh, my goodness, they're all going to go to the border? Can't they take the president with them? The influx of illegal immigrants is causing chaos in his city as well. Watch. Assess the full situation, and that also requires our team to be at the border. I've heard that the goal is to convince migrants not to come to Chicago during winter time. Is that true? No. Thousands of illegal immigrants have been sleeping in Chicago police stations and at airports as they wait to be placed inside shelters. The number of people bust in from the southern border is expected to double. And by the way... That is courtesy of the federal government. We'll get into that in a moment. Residents furious that precious resources now are not going to them, and they are angry over their tax dollars being spent this way. I want Mayor Brandon Johnson to understand that you are selling us out for people who can't vote for you. Yeah, we come in a community of black people where we already get the low scraps. And then you want to take the little scraps, the resources that we have, and put us at the bottom of the barrel? That's not fair. And I won't have it. Ooh, Congresswoman, there's a lot to react to. Yes, yes, Harris. You know, I kind of feel like John McClane in the greatest Christmas movie of all time, Die Hard. Welcome to the party, pal. We have been saying for years that the border is insecure, that the Biden border crisis has turned every town in America into a border community. And guess what? It has. And now this administration and blue states and blue cities all across America are going to pay the price. And so now we get 20 miles of border. By the way, they have to violate 26 federal laws to do that. But the law has never really mattered to them. And I think part of the thing that needs to happen for all these blue cities and all these blue states and certainly the White House, they got to admit they were wrong. The first step to fixing a problem is admitting you were wrong. And we know that Trump derangement syndrome is exceptionally alive and well at the White House right now. So they need to first admit that Trump was right, they were wrong, that border, the, the border wall is effective, it is a force multiplier, that technology is helping in pushing back against mm -hmm. the illegals coming across the border. And guess what? Putting America first works. You know, that is why people are so mad. That's especially important for the people who voted for Biden. It's important exactly. for people to know the truth. I don't know how many of them might be watching Fox and can see all of our <laughs> coverage from stem to stern. But for it to come from the White House would be critical.
I won't yes. hold my breath. I'm guessing you won't either. But when you flip the previous president's policies into effect again and start to build a wall, that, that'll, that's sufficient for a short-term exactly. start. A lot of critics are pointing to the free resources provided to certain illegals. Select state and local governments are providing housing and cash assistance, education, health care, food, and legal support. And on the federal level, assistance of all sorts is available to select immigrants with qualified status. Here's a scroll of those including Medicaid and Social Security. And while we scroll, Congresswoman, talk to me about fairness. Listen, the United States is the most generous nation on this planet. We are the most compassionate people in the world. And I agree that there is absolutely a system in place to help people, but it has been exploited, it has been abused, and now it is broken. And Americans are paying the price. We are being taken advantage of, and that has to change. If you continue to put Americans last, you will have no one to take care of folks mm. who need help. You will not have a system that is well-funded to do this. And we have our own people here at home, our veterans who are being pushed out and onto the streets. We have working class families that pay their taxes, that do everything right, and they're being punished by the Biden administration because the Biden administration wants to, and we know this, they want to make sure that you don't have to have an ID to vote and you don't have to be a citizen to vote. And they will do anything to keep power here in this city. They will do anything to maintain control. That is why they want to grow the government. They are entirely reliant on this agenda of dependency and control. And Harris, when you think about it, and we've, we've, you and I have talked about this, when you think about that, all they want to do is keep people dependent on big government programs so that they maintain control. And fixing the problem means that they lose leverage. By persisting the problems, they stay in power. Solutions, they lose leverage. That is why fixing the border is so critical. It's not just national security. It's not just the humanitarian thing to do. It's not just about putting Americans first. It is about breaking the system that is keeping Americans down. It is about breaking the system that is keeping everyone beholden to big government and the draining of the swamp is absolutely what we need to be focused on. Yeah. Uh, Congresswoman Kamek, thank you very much for being with me in focus Thank you. for all of those important reasons. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.